Let's talk about Microsoft Copilot. So the Super Bowl just recently happened between I think Taylor Swift and Usher or something like that. And during the Super Bowl, the part that everybody watches, the commercials, there was an ad for Microsoft Copilot. Now, if you've been deep in the AI space for the last, you know, year and a half, you've probably already heard of Copilot. You've played with Copilot. It used to be Bing chat, but for a lot of people, this commercial was their first introduction, their first time ever hearing about Microsoft Copilot. So I thought it would be fun to do a quick breakdown of the Super Bowl commercial, test some of the prompts that they actually showed on the screen during the ad. And then after we've done that, I wanna give you even more details around what Copilot is actually capable of because, well, this commercial just kind of scratches the surface. The commercial starts out with a bunch of people saying that other people are telling them they can't do stuff like I'll never be able to open my own business or get a degree, you'll never make your own movie or build something. They say I'm too old to learn something new, too young to change the world, but I say, watch me. And then it goes into showing off what Copilot can do. The first prompt we see them do is generate storyboard images for the dragon scene in my, I'm guessing it says screenplay. Let's see what happens when we give it that exact prompt. So typing the prompt exactly, it starts to generate an image and it generates what I guess I would sort of describe as a picture of a storyboard, not necessarily a storyboard itself. Here's another image it generated. Here's the third. It's just interesting because it's not really creating a storyboard. It's sort of cutting off the edges of the storyboard. And here's the fourth one. And if we go back to their YouTube video, here's what it generated for them. So even in their image, you could see it sort of cut off the storyboard. Theirs was in color. It gave me a whole bunch in black and white, but this is the reality versus what they gave in the commercial. This being AI, you can enter this exact same prompt a hundred different times and get a hundred different outcomes that all look completely different. I'm sure with some variation of wording and enough tries, you could probably get prompts that look this colorful and are sort of this well laid out as a storyboard. Now, the next prompt they give it is write code for my 3D open world game. Let's see what Copilot actually gives us. So entering the prompt exactly the same, and at least with the free version of Copilot, it won't generate code for us. It says, I'm sorry, but I cannot write code for your 3D open world game. This is a very complex and creative task that requires a lot of planning, design, and testing. I can only help you with basic aspects of game development, such as finding resources, learning concepts, and generating ideas. And then it goes on to basically tell me how I can go about learning to code. I had this set on more creative. If I put it on more precise and give it the exact same prompt again, this time it wrote some really, really basic code, but it does say creating a 3D open world game is a complex task that involves various components such as graphics rendering, physics simulation, AI, and more. Here's a very basic example of how you might start setting up a 3D environment using Unity's C Sharp scripting. I have no idea if this code would actually run or not, but it doesn't seem like it's substantial enough to actually really do anything. In the commercial, it actually appears to write much more in-depth code here. The next prompt that it shows on screen is quiz me in organic chemistry. Go ahead and start a new topic. Quiz me in organic chemistry. Now it gave me a question, but man, it was slow. I don't know what was going on, but it took forever to generate this. It said, what is the IU PAC name for the organic compound with the following structure, gave this structure and then gave four options and then told us to reply with the answer here. I have absolutely no clue. I'll just say one for ethanol and I got it correct. And then it asked if I want another question. Jumping back to the commercial here, they give it the prompt, design a sign for my classic truck repair garage mics. And those are the signs that it produced. Let's see what happens when we give it that same prompt here. Here are the four images that it generated. And again, here's what they looked like in the ad. Not quite the same, not horrible. Couldn't really get the words right. These are all kind of cool neon. I have a feeling the prompt that was used to get these actual images aren't the prompt that they showed off in the commercial. I just had to guess. And then the last prompt that the commercial shows is, can you help me? And then the rest is cut off. It doesn't ever actually show what she was asking for. And it obviously showed this prompt to give the payoff of the commercial, which was co-pilot responding, yes, I can help. But what we've looked at here so far is kind of just scratching the surface of Copilot. Yes, you can go to copilot.microsoft.com. You get these three options here. If you're on a newer version of Windows, you actually get a Copilot bar that you can press a button on Windows and it will pop up Copilot on the side here. But Microsoft also has what they call Copilot Pro. And Copilot 
Pro is actually 20 bucks a month to use. And it actually gives you a little bit more control over what you can do with Copilot, gives better outputs. And it also allows you to use Copilot inside of Microsoft 365 apps. So if you have a Microsoft 365 account, you can use Copilot inside of Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Word, you name it, pretty much all of the Microsoft apps allow you to use Copilot inside of them now. I do have a Copilot Pro account. There's really only two main differences that will tell you that you're on a Copilot Pro account versus a free account. This is my Copilot Pro account, and you can see it actually does say Copilot Pro at the top, where the non-pro does not. And then also on Copilot Pro, if I scroll down here, you can actually see it gives me the option to switch between GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo. I'm not sure exactly what version the free version is using, probably GPT-4, maybe it's GPT-4 Turbo. I'm actually not 100% sure, but Copilot gives you the option to switch between them. And those are really the main differences you'll see. However, I have noticed that the outputs that you get from the pro version tend to be quite a bit better than the outputs you get from the non-pro version. So let's try those exact same prompts from the commercial, but this time let's try them in the pro version. We asked the pro version, to generate storyboard images for the dragon scene in my screenplay, we actually get images that are probably a little bit closer to what we saw in the ad. As a reminder, here's what the ad showed. And check out this one down here in the bottom left. If I click into it and get a bigger view of it, it's looking a little bit closer to the demo one that they gave us here. Not too bad. Now, while I'm on this image page, another new feature that Copilot just rolled out, and I believe this is on both the free and the paid version, is the ability to select and segment out just sections of an image. So I can select just this dragon here, blur the background of everything behind the dragon, or make it so the dragon has color, but everything else is black and white. And there's more features being rolled out soon for this segment feature. If I click on an image in the free version, just to confirm, you can see that even on the free version, I do have that feature as well. But from what I understand, it's being rolled out. So it's not in everybody's Microsoft account yet. This isn't a free versus paid feature. It's just, if you don't see it, it's just not rolled out in your account yet. So give it a little more time and you'll have it soon. Now the next prompt from the commercial, write code for my 3D open world game. I get a fairly similar response to that second response where it gave me some code, but looking at it, it doesn't look like it would actually do anything. And it says this code provides a starting point for your game's main script. You'll need to expand on this with additional scripts to handle player movement, etc. But I mean, looking at this, I'm not a coder, but I can tell you that there's really not really even a start to anything there. <laughs> so even though the commercial is saying it can write code for your 3D open world game, I think that's a feature where they maybe have gotten ahead of themselves a little bit. It doesn't seem to do great with that prompt yet. Next up, let's ask it to quiz me in organic chemistry. It's running much faster. What I found interesting is that it asked the same dang question as last time, which I know happens to be ethanol. But let's have it give us another question. And by the way, this is just lying when it's giving my responses. Compared to the free version and the paid version, the paid version feels 10 times faster. I don't know if it's really that much faster. Feels that much faster. Which of the following reactions is an example of a substitution reaction? I have no idea. I'm going to guess two because it's the only one that has an equal sign in it. <laughs> Not correct. Hmm. Who would have thought I don't know anything about organic chemistry? And finally, I'm going to switch it back to creative mode here. And this time we'll ask it to design a sign for my classic truck repair garage mics. And once again, fairly similar results, although this time in two of the signs, it did spell mics right. So I guess it's a little bit of an improvement. I don't know if that's just sort of luck. I don't think it's using any sort of different Dolly 3 model between the free version and the paid version. I think I just got a different seed this time that was better with generating text. Now where Copilot Pro really stands out and starts to make it feel worth it is if you are a big user of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, if you use PowerPoint, Excel, Word, OneNote, Outlook, you use those suite of tools, Copilot Pro is something you might wanna look into. So if I open up PowerPoint and let's start with a blank presentation, if you look up in the top right up here, you can see I now have an option in my PowerPoint for Copilot. I click this and it opens up my Copilot dashboard. Now, the very first thing I tried when I opened up Copilot was I copied and pasted an outline for a presentation into Copilot and said, here's an outline for a slide presentation, make this presentation for me. And it couldn't do that. That was kind of a bummer. I was really, really hoping to see it take a whole outline that I generated and then AI turn that into slides for me. Couldn't do it though. However, I can create a presentation 
and give it a topic and it will generate the whole presentation from scratch. It just won't generate the outline for me. So create a presentation about the world's largest birds. And after several seconds, it says, okay, here you go. A presentation about the world's largest birds has been created with multiple slides. It looks like it generated six slides for us. The largest birds in the world, ostrich, some details about the ostrich, southern cassowary, emperor penguin, Indian condor, host's eagle. I don't know why it has a picture of like a fly or a mosquito here. You know, it did a pretty decent job with the text, but it kind of failed on the images. <laughs> Being a presentation about birds, it seems kind of odd that just the first has a picture of a bird, not a particularly big bird, and then the rest really have nothing to do with birds. It's more showing their habitat than what the bird actually looks like. I can then ask questions about this deck, or I can add a slide about. So let's go ahead and put add a slide about, and I'll do emus. And it added another slide about emus. They're native to Australia, second largest bird in the world, et cetera, et cetera. You know, when I asked it for a presentation about the world's largest birds, you think it would have included the world's second largest bird by default, but that's what it gave me. And once again, no picture of an actual emu, which I find interesting. You've got access to Dali. I'm sure you've got access to a large stock photo library. That's where these other images must come from. You gotta have an image of an emu in there. <laughs> but still, Copilot in PowerPoint could be very helpful if you just need to add an additional slide or you don't wanna start on a presentation from scratch. It can generate a whole bunch of pre-filled out slides for you, but at least you're not starting completely from scratch. Saying all that, I do think they will get this more dialed in. This will get better. This is very, very early days for this Copilot Pro inside of PowerPoint. Now I'm inside of Microsoft Word. I actually opened up one of the sort of default templates, which is like our resume template here. But as you can see, we have the option for Copilot up here, but also inside of Word, if I select some text here, like let's select this text, it actually added a little Copilot button. I don't know who picked the color scheme for this template here. I, it's horrible. So you can barely see the Copilot, but if I hover over it, you'll see it. Right here on the left, we have a Copilot button. If I click on this Copilot button, I can rewrite with Copilot or visualize as a table. Let's just go ahead and select all of this work experience here. Click our Copilot button and visualize as a table and see what it generates for us. When I did that, it created a weird funky table over here. I'm trying to undo it by pressing like the delete button and nothing's actually happening. You know, just as I'm recording this video, I'm finding a bunch of little like bugs and issues and it is what it is. It's early days. I'm not trying to bias you and make you think you should get Copilot Pro. I just wanted to test it. And so far as I'm playing around with it, I'm finding a bunch of little bugs and things that aren't operating properly. I guess I had to click keep it to keep it there. Otherwise I couldn't close that little box. Now if I hit command Z, okay. <laughs> I undid it the old fashioned way. Let's go ahead and check out the co-pilot up at the top and we have some options. Summarize this doc. Is there a call to action? Some things we can try, write about, change, summarize this doc, ask a question about this doc. Let's go ahead and create a brand new blank document. And as you can see, the second we open up a blank document, We've got this draft with Copilot, and I could type something like write an informational article about the world's largest birds, click generate. And this part, it seems to be doing fairly well. It actually generated a decent looking article. If I select it all, control A, hit our little Copilot button. I could have it rewrite it with Copilot if I want, or I can open up our Copilot tab over here. And let's ask a question about this doc. Let's just say, name the birds mentioned in this doc. And there you go, ostrich, Andean condor, wandering albatross which are the three that it seemed to mention here. So some additional AI functionality here inside of Word as well. Popping open Excel, let's start out with a blank workbook. And this one, we do have a Copilot button here, but it is grayed out right now. When I hover over it, it says, Copilot only works with files stored in OneDrive or SharePoint. So that's kind of interesting. So I opened up another Excel spreadsheet. This is one of the built-in templates that says loan amateurization schedule. I'm gonna go ahead and just save this to OneDrive. I'm gonna call it my test, click save. Now that it's in OneDrive, for whatever reason, Copilot still grayed out. So I'm running into some issues with this Copilot built into Microsoft 365 a little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of Excel because it doesn't seem to wanna work for me in here. I'm sure I'm gonna get a whole bunch of comments from something that I'm overlooking and people are like, all you had to do is press that one button, but I don't know, it's not super intuitive out of the box which is already saying something. One last thing that I think is pretty cool that you can do is you can actually have it generate Excel spreadsheets for you. So in the free version here, I'm gonna give it this prompt. Create an Excel spreadsheet that lists the most populated cities in the world. When I give this prompt to the free version of Copilot, I get 
I'm sorry for any confusion, but as an AI, I'm unable to create an Excel spreadsheet directly. However, I can provide you with the data and you can easily input it into Excel. Here are the most populated cities in the world in 2024. And there's an Excel icon here that says edit in Excel. I can click on that, it'll show it as exporting, and it's not gonna actually open up my computer version of Excel, but it opens up the web browser version of Excel here. So I thought that was something pretty interesting that you can do. Also, I noticed that in the web-based version, I can actually open up Copilot. It just wouldn't let me in the downloaded version. It gives me some options like add formula columns, highlight, sort and filter, and analyze. So a bunch of other things that you can test using Copilot inside of Excel. I just found it super buggy inside of the downloadable Windows versions, but seemingly just using it inside of the Copilot platform here and inside of the browser version of Excel, everything seems to work much better that way. So there you have it. There's a breakdown. We explored the Super Bowl ad to see if Microsoft Copilot can actually do what the ad said. And I wanted to show off some of the differences between the regular Copilot and the Copilot Pro. My sort of final thoughts on it are that I really, really like Microsoft Copilot because it is using GPT-4 Turbo. So it should give us pretty good responses like what you can expect from the paid version of ChatGPT. However, as of right now, it doesn't seem to be very fine tuned or good at writing code. The direct integrations inside of PowerPoint and Excel and Microsoft Word at least leave a little bit to be desired. Word, it actually works pretty dang well. Excel, I was having some issues using it in the downloadable app. PowerPoint honestly didn't really feel that helpful to me. I couldn't upload an outline and have it make a presentation based on the outline. When I asked it to make a presentation for me, it made a really short one and then didn't even add images that were relevant to the rest of the presentation. So some of the Microsoft 365 integrations, not super great yet. I think the pro version needs some work. Like, I don't think I could honestly recommend going and grabbing the pro version, especially if you're paying for ChatGPT plus right now, because the 365 integration is still kind of wonky in my eyes, and there's not enough value in the paid version over what you get in the free version. That's just my feeling on it right now. I think um, it's going to get there. I think a lot of the 365 integrations are going to work a lot better. I think Microsoft is actively working on this. So I think we're going to see some rapid improvements. But as of this video, as of right now, today, as I'm recording this, I don't think it's worth the 20 bucks. It's, it's, it's hard to justify that 20 bucks when the 365 doesn't work very well. And the difference between what we get out of the free results and the paid results inside of the chat bot don't seem too different. So hopefully you found that helpful. Hopefully you can make a better, more informed decision about Copilot. I will be making more videos about Copilot in the future. I think they will improve. So this is just where it's at right now. I think this is very, very early stages, but because there was a Super Bowl ad and a lot more people are aware of this product, I thought I would give my thoughts on it and play around with it and show it to you. So. There you have it. One quick thing before we wrap up, I am going to be giving away this exact GeForce RTX 4080 Super. It's actually really heavy because the card is in this box right now. Nvidia sent this to me. I thought about putting it in my computer and I went, no, I'm gonna give it to somebody. I'm gonna give it to somebody who watches this channel. In order to win it, you just have to register for the free GTC conference. I will put a link below to where you can learn more about it. This video isn't sponsored by them, but I did tell them I would shout out GTC and their free virtual event. So the link to GTC will be in the description. Totally free to register. It's a virtual online event that you can watch. They do have an in-person component, but in order to be eligible to win this, all you have to do is register for the free virtual event. And that's what I got for you today. Check out futuretools.io if you wanna Stay in the loop with all the latest, coolest AI tools, the most recent AI news, as well as if you wanna join the free newsletter, which gets you access to the AI income database, a database of a bunch of cool ways to make money with AI. You can find it all over at futuretools.io. The site is completely free to use, the newsletter's free, just trying to provide some cool value, help you come across new tools and news that maybe you haven't seen yet. So that's futuretools.io. If you like videos like this, you wanna stay in the loop with AI news, AI tutorials, and just some fun AI videos in general, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And I'll make sure more videos like this show up in your YouTube feed. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.